Yo, so if you haven't already heard, Google is finally shutting down Stadia and it will be officially gone uh, January of 2023 now. Um, in terms of technology, it will still be around. They're just going to repurpose it for other things or maybe license it out. Who knows what they're actually going to do with it. But Stadia as a whole is going to be gone as a service. They're even going to refund people who bought hardware, which are people like my older brother who bought a, who at least got, I believe, the controller. So, uh, and this is not surprising since Stadia, I feel like, was doomed from the start. It had a good idea. You know, I think the idea of Stadia where you can basically open a Chrome browser wherever you are in the world or have a, you know, a Chromecast or something. You bring that with you, bring a controller, or if you just have mouse and keyboard, you can play your games from anywhere in the world, you know, through a laptop, through a computer. You didn't have to bring consoles with you or you can, and it would all be powered, you know, through Google's technology. I think the idea was great, but the execution was... Well, terrible. I mean, they didn't, I, I feel like they just, they treated this product rather poorly. You know, they didn't get anything that they should have done when you do launch a, basically a new console into the console war genre or into the console war, right? Basically. And, you know, they did not execute well at all. And I think they just, I, at the end of the day, I would say Google just does not understand how the gaming world works, which is funny because, you know, they it's Google, right? Like you would think that it wouldn't be hard for them to understand how or at least like do some research, you know, hire the right people in order to get this sucker going. Right. I mean, there there's tons of executives that they could have poached from either Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo in order to launch a new console particularly Sony and Microsoft, you know, people who have led the launches of Xbox and PlayStation, like they should have gotten whoever the heck, you know, built those divisions, you know, up in those companies. But as we can see, they did not do that. And to me, you know, there's like a few things wrong, like, you know, why they failed. It's like, well, one for all, well, first of all, like they, when they first came out, there was nothing good on it, you know, like they were they were boasting about how you can play Destiny 2 on it, which I think by that point when it came out, the the game was already about a year old, you know, so it was already like a few expansions. It's like, who gives a crap about Destiny 2? What it needed was exclusives. If you look at every successful launch or every successful console that's ever launched, they have exclusives. You know, Nintendo being the first one, I mean, well, not the first, but like one of the the longest reigning consoles ever has its Mario franchises, right? You have all those exclusives that's been on the platform forever. When Sega came out, you know, they had Sonic, the semi, you know, uh, I guess you can say uh, competitor to Mario. You know, they had that as an exclusive. When Xbox came out, they had Halo. Halo was the ultimate exclusive for Xbox. That was, that's what made people buy Xbox, just to play Halo. Um, with PlayStation, their exclusives weren't great, but they still had great exclusives such as Killzone. Uh, Final Fantasy VII was only exclusive on PS1. It was definitely not on N64 or GameCube or anything like that. Um, and they had all these other kind of more high-end games that arguably couldn't be run on an N64, but can only be run on a PS1. So, um, you know, they had their kind of corner of the market there. And moving forward, you know, PlayStation Studios and Xbox Studios or Microsoft Studios, I could say, I should say, um, they always have the exclusive and that's why they continue to do well. Stadia had none of that. You know, they were just porting games over. And arguably, why would anyone want to play a ported game um on and especially if they already had it you know like yeah i wouldn't mind being able to play destiny 2 when i was still playing it um you know from anywhere in the world you know if i go to a hotel or something as long as i had a decent internet connection hey i can play destiny 2 awesome however execution was just not there you know because one um in order to even get 
a decent uh, streaming, I guess, say quality in order the game to work, you know, well, you needed a really, really good internet connection. And the amount of data and bandwidth that you needed to even run Stadia was just, at the time, not possible. Like, or at least, I mean, I shouldn't say not possible, but unrealistic to the average consumer. You know, not everyone, or, well, there's still data caps out there. And back then, there was even more data caps, and not just caps in terms of how fast you can go, but just, like, how much, you know, data you can use on a monthly basis. So it was just not possible. I mean... I mean, in terms of like, if someone wanted to play 4K 60 FPS games, it was just um, not only would that take up so much data and bandwidth, but people would hit their data caps within like a week or within a few days. So it was just not possible unless someone was paying two, three hundred dollars a month just to play on Stadia. So it was not worth it. Not only that, but their pricing model was absolutely crap. Not only did people have to play a pay a play pay a monthly subscription, but you also had to buy the games. Like this could have been the Netflix of video games, where it's like, okay, I play a monthly subscription of like you know maybe twenty, thirty bucks or whatever the pricing is, and then I just get all the games, right? Like whatever I want to play, I just go into a library and play it. That should have been the model. Not oh hey, I have to pay you a monthly subscription of like I think the lowest was ten. But I also have to uh, pay for these games. It's like, you know, it's like kind of like going into an amusement park. You have to pay entry to get in, but then you have to pay for every single ride too. And not, and it's not like you pay a dollar entry to get into the amusement park. You have to pay like 10, 20 bucks, and then you have to pay another 10, 20 bucks per game or per ride, right? Like it's it's absolutely insanity. So for them, I feel like it was just... Um, bat, like they basically treated this entire thing well I arguably too much like a product they treated it like a toy you know they treat it like a like an action figure that you know just to, meant to be mass produced and that's I believe that's really why they fail you know they came out the wrong time and they came out with the wrong stuff I think if they came out with this maybe in another five ten years um, if they had done that, you know, not even now today, like I would say maybe in like 2025 or like 2030, this would m- maybe be a m- lot more viable option when we have much better wireless technology, much better internet technology, a better infrastructure for that. Because let's face it, like the majority, like if I, even if I were to go to an hotel these days, like I'm not going to get a great connection. You know, you get maybe a decent enough connection for at most hotels to browse the web, maybe stream uh, a few movies on Netflix if you're lucky. But most part, they're pretty terrible, you know? Um, So most, and most public Wi-Fi's aren't great either because, you know, it's not cheap. All that, all that bandwidth, someone has to pay for it and they can't just be offering at, you know, for nothing. So, you know, at least in America, the infrastructure for wireless is not great. You know, if you go to some place like Korea, where I've been, they have crazy good public Wi-Fi. But, you know, that's a whole nother story. But you can't run a whole entire business just on one country, right? Or at least not just Korea, South Korea. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is this is kind of one of those things that, like, you know, you everyone saw coming. And it definitely, if you go to the Google Graveyard, Stadia is definitely there now. and um, one of the, uh, and I would say one of the kind of worst kickers about this whole announcement was that a lot of the devs didn't know they were gonna that they were closing down Stadia because even if I scroll down here on this TechCrunch article, um, Stadia pre- announced or at least uh, they tweeted out on July 29th, not too long ago this year, that uh, Stadia is not shutting down. But you know, whoever was running the social media page clearly. Um, was not in the know on what the actual status of Stadia was going to be. Um, so totally sucks. I think, I mean, I think they are saying that like a lot of the engineers, a lot of the people are just going to be redistributed and the people who are working on the Stadia technology are just going to stay on the project or stay on the, you know, the team, but they'll just be like renamed something else because the technology 
it can be used for other things. Uh, I don't know what, but um, you know, those people will still be around, but I would imagine there are going to lay off a good a t- chunk of people because they're just going to have no use for them um, or at least no, no way to repurpose them, which I hoping that's not the case. Cause I mean, Google is such a big company. They do so many products. I feel like you can repurpose like, you know, 99% of those folks, but we never know. Um, but that really does suck. Um, and I don't know. I, I feel like uh, part of me almost even wanted to be like, ooh, like if, you know, Google needs, you know, uh, a guy like me who's worked in the business, like I would love to work for them. But good, thank God I didn't because I would be probably out of a job by now. Or at least, uh, you know, definitely be sprucing up that resume. Anyways, that's my take and, you know, um, the news on the Google Stadia. Let me know what you guys think. Did you guys participate? Did you guys like the idea? Hated it? You know, why do you think it failed? I express my opinions. Do you agree? Disagree? All that's jazz. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Later.